電車でゴー In 1998, Dengo Mania was sweeping Japan. The unexpected success of the arcade game and the PlayStation conversion flying off shelves had created a mini boom. Buoyed by these successes, other publishers wanted to get a port for all the other consoles. After all, this was now the fifth console generation, the 3D era. And anything the PlayStation could do, the Saturn and N64 could also do. And while Dengo 64 was another year off, There was nothing stopping a publisher from securing the rights to Denshi to go from Taito and releasing a version for the Sega Saturn. It sounds odd that a company was willing to develop for a console that was almost entirely dead in the West and months away from the appearance of its successor in Japan. In Europe and America, the Saturn had been a commercial failure. Japan, however, was a different story. There was a hefty install base of Japanese Saturn owners, and it would be a safe bet that they too would like to live out their train driving fantasies. Nihon Flex were the plucky upstarts taking on the task of developing a home conversion of the arcade Denshi to Go. The Osaka based company had been around since the late 60s and had recently repositioned itself to produce mini LCD games, trading cards, and importing foreign snacks. This was their first crack at game development, and ultimately, Their last. Originally slated for release at the end of May and having been demonstrated at the Spring Tokyo Game Show in March 98, Denshi to Go X was looking fairly promising. The game featured the same tracks and rolling stock as the arcade game but with a couple of crucial advantages over the PlayStation port. Alongside the four routes from the arcade game, there were the two hidden routes, the extended Sanin and Tokaido mainline. And there were the Saturn exclusive special extended Yamanote and Keihin Tohoku lines. They would also add additional weather effects, including a snow mode, which allowed any of the tracks to be played with the higher level of difficulty offered by decreased traction. This was fairly ambitious for a first time developer publisher. While most of the content was readily available from the arcade and unused development materials, trying to outdo the million selling PlayStation port may have been what led to Nihon Flex's downfall. In an interview with Saturn Magazine in April 1998, Mr. Nishida from Nihon Flex's planning and development department had very high hopes for the conversion, even putting it ahead of the PlayStation in terms of visuals, claiming the color characteristics of the Saturn will be more arcade accurate. This interview was given around a month before the release date, a release date that came and went. The August edition of Saturn Fan Magazine printed an update on the development of Denshi to Go X, with the publisher now listed as Takara. Nihon Flex had declared bankruptcy in July of 1998, leaving the game 70% completed and another game, Biography of Estopolis, also known as Lufia 3, dead in the water. Takara, much like Nihon Flex, were a toy maker that had recently invested in video game development and publishing, only to be far more successful in both fields. Starting out on the Famicom, Takara had published games for the 8 and 16 bit systems and even published Earthworm Jim 1 and 2 in Japan. A new date of October was given to the launch of Denshi to Go X, with all the features promised by Flex intact. It's unsure how much work went on at Takara to get the game ready to ship, but there are some very telling signs that this was patched up and shipped out in a rush. Denshi to Go X released on the Sega Saturn on October the 1st, 18 months after the arcade and 10 months. After the PlayStation port. It is apparent from the very start that this game was never going to match the PlayStation version, much less the arcade. The user interface is incredibly bare with none of the extra features found in other ports. Options are very limited, and the photo and movie studios from the PlayStation version are entirely missing. There are texture issues, really, really bad texture issues with overlapping tiles that hide the tracks. There are bridges that are six feet long. There are upside down trains waiting on sidings. There's no pause menu. This is by far the most shocking feature of this game. There's no pause menu. You can pause the game and then you can unpause it. You cannot exit out to the main menu. You cannot return to the starting station. The ability to restart a run is essential. If you miss a station stop, you can just return to the station or have another go or quit entirely. In the Saturn version, You have to reset the console. It's 1998. Resetting the console to start the game again was last seen on the NES. 
resetting the console results in a 20 second plus wait to get back into the game. Oh, and there's slowdown. Absolutely crippling slowdown. Pull into a station and the game will chug to a single digit frame count. Compounding this is the dropped inputs. To go from break level one to break level eight takes far longer than it should. Frantically mash the B button, my friend. The braking will increase when the game is good and ready. Couple this with a slowdown and it could take upwards of four to five seconds to go from naught to full break. By this point, it's already over. You are not stopping the train on time. You should restart the run. Oh, wait. Slovenly user interface and presentation issues aside, the game is fairly solid. It's all here, the faithfully recreated lines, four trains, each with slightly different handling, four extended tracks, so doubling that found in the PlayStation game, and a couple of extra modes. Do well on each line and you'll get a bonus game on the last leg of the run. As with other versions of the game, this is your chance to claw back some waiting time, then to go life gauge equivalent. If you gently connect the trains, you can get a time bonus. If you fail and mash the cars together, you unlock free mode, which sets your timer to 999, meaning you can cruise these lines to your heart's content. This would have been a welcome feature on the PlayStation, but thankfully it makes an appearance in later Denshi to Go games. Additionally, if you play the bonus game and manage to get a mere one second time bonus, you unlock the aforementioned snow mode. This is not as easy as it sounds, it requires a lot of effort. And the bonus game only appears at the final stages of a no continue run, meaning you've been playing for 10, 15, 20 minutes just to get to the bonus stage and stacking it really hurts. Still, you can just quit and restart. Oh yeah, no you can't. This edition also had a bespoke controller which released at the same price as the game, 5,800 yen. It was produced by Taito for Takara and is a carbon copy of the PlayStation 2 handle affair with the left master controller handling acceleration and the right rotor handling braking. The controller also has a select button, even though the Saturn controller has no such button. In this case, it acts as an additional start button. The controller is a game changer for the Saturn, allowing the player to jump from no break to maximum almost instantly. It borders on being essential to get the maximum out of the game and mitigate some of the dropped inputs and lag caused by slowdown. The game released to middling reviews with Saturn fan giving it straight 7s, but advised that the score increased to an 8 if using the Mascon controller. In the overall ranking of all Saturn games released in Japan, the readers of Sega Saturn magazine ranked it 576 out of 945, being beaten to the coveted 575th position by Chibi Maruko-chan Battle Puzzle Drama, another reskinned Puyo Pop game. Sales figures are hard to find, but if Dengo X had been a million seller as it was on the PlayStation, you can bet your boots that Sega would have been telling everyone. In the run-up to release, the game was covered widely in the Sega Saturn mags. Previews, reviews, walkthroughs, even a playtest from a real-life train driver appeared on the glossy pages of Saturn Fan and others. A strategy guide was also printed for the game, with similar features to the arcade and PlayStation books. There were expectations for this game to ride the train boom, but it seems the late arrival of Denshi to Go X so long after the other efforts and after Denshi to Go 2 was already in arcades has doomed this to mediocrity. There's not much else to say really. Uh, much like the PlayStation, there's no way to see what tracks you've completed and which were no continue runs. Uh, the high score table appears at random while waiting on the title screen, rendering it almost pointless. Uh, you can save your game, but you can't adjust the dials from digital to analog. Uh, nor can you change the distance gauge to centimetres. Filling in the unrecorded gaps between developers, I'd imagine that Nihon Flex had spent all their time getting the core game and extended tracks ready. When they ran out of money, Takara swept in, slapping their name on the box, giving the barest bones of user interfaces and features and hoping that the Dench to Go mania would pay off. It's admirable in a way. Even though it took down its developer and publisher and released in a barely complete form, the game does work. It is Denshi to Go on the Sega Saturn, a machine notoriously awkward to develop 3D games for. Had they chosen any other system, I think Nihon Flex would have survived. Now, on our tier list, where shall we put this? Reasonably faithful recreation of the arcade game aside, there's not much else going for it. Being a year late to the party, they've not got anything radically different to the PlayStation to make up for the drop in visuals. Uh, with the original sitting pretty with a B rating, 
I think we can comfortably bump this into the D category. It's not the worst. Oh, believe me, it's not the worst. So that'll do us for this game. Uh, join me next time for Dench to Go on the Bandai Wonderswan, a monochrome delight to play on the go. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you at the next station.